I don't care if I get the listing. I care if I can serve this person. I started to realize the philosophies of the business that never change. And the more they change, the more we must depend on the things that never change. There's an unlimited amount of business for each and every one of you, each and every one of you, every day, more than you can ever get to. That if you don't get this deal, another one's right behind it. But let me take it a step further. When you lose a deal, guess what you get? All that time back you would have spent on that deal that you can now invest into five more deals. We're getting the same commission we got when I started in the business 22 years ago. The reason being is because we provide more value than the money that we get paid. Top four, he's the man of the real estate industry. And he will get you leads, a lot more than you can fathom. Reach out to property owners and knock doors, get the data. Made a million first three years, lost everything. He's where he started, made it, lost it, made it back. Now in this industry, he is the largest. A lot of these coaches are teaching you garbage. Ricky, he does it for free, doesn't charge it. Got the sauce like he needed some tartar. He was broke and homeless, sleeping in the car and people's couches. It was hard and people doubted. Then he started flipping houses. Ain't over, complicate the process. He'll help you iron out your problems. Teachers talk to people you don't know to get a lot of deals and hours. How we doing? Oh my God, good morning. Good, good morning. Vancouver, Washington. Where am I? Hey, I didn't know Dayton was fixing to say something like that, and the church was in session up here this morning, wasn't it? Give it up for Dayton. When he, when he first called me about this, he said, you're going to do this event. I was like, all right, cool. Where's it at? Vancouver. I was like, I love Canada. He said, no, 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 no. Vancouver, Washington. I was like, I love D.C. <laughs> love it. Now, Washington State. I said, hold on a second. I went straight to Google. Where in God's green earth is he trying to take me? Now, we, we've been here since Friday. We went to the Portland Zoo yesterday with my daughter. She's four years old. No, no day before yesterday. Yesterday we went to the phone, we came over here, we went from Portland to Vancouver. What a difference a river makes. <laughs> so y'all know what I'm talking about. We went to the farmer's market, everybody's so nice. And later on I, I realized somebody told me that the only reason they're nice today is because the sun came out. Everybody's, he told me, everybody's been in uh, sweat, sweat jackets, walking around just, just mad for like four months. Is that true? Have y'all just been unhappy and grumpy for like four months because it's been cloudy and stuff? They said I brought the, brought the sunshine. All right. Let's talk about your business. Let's talk about your business. Now, I built a business a real estate business as a single agent. I built it up to a million dollars a year in Alabama. Alabama. All right? Now, how many of you guys, just, you can get loud, how many of you guys want to build a million dollar a year business? Okay, okay, that was kind of weak, so I'm not really convinced that you actually want to build a million dollar business. If you're starting out that week, I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't going to happen. Do you believe in your mind that focusing on listings and having a more listing-heavy business would be the best path to get to a million dollar a year business? Let me hear you. Okay. Now, when you focus 100% of your business, of your, of your actions towards going after listings, okay, a lot of people are like, what about buyers? Property owners are the best buyers. And when you focus on listings, right, you focus 100% of your actions on listings, 20% of your business is buyers. 
people who buy your listings, sellers who buy something else, referrals, etc. You see where I'm going with this? So I'm just I'm trying to lay the framework for you. Okay? Now, what I what I what I'm envisioning that I'm hearing is that you guys are here today. Why are you here today? That's that's the thing. Like like what are you doing here today? You you could be selling property. Why are you here? Why are you investing time here? And is it possibly that you're looking for a breakthrough? A breakthrough, right? Say, I, I'm looking for a breakthrough. Is this mic not working? E, get, get better at listing appointments. I don't, I'm not gonna bat a thousand. I don't care if I get the listing. I care if I can serve this person. What is it that they're trying to do beyond the cell? See, this is when you tap into really crushing it. When you realize, when you walk into a listing appointment, they can tell if you're just trying to get the listing. Guess what? You ain't going to get the listing. But when, they, when, when you give off the impression that you need them, they're going to think they don't need you. If you create the environment that you don't need them and you're here to serve them and help them through whatever it is the problem is they're going through in their life that's causing them to want to sell this property, they're going to think, I need this person. It's a transformation. And then uh, another one. I, we, this is the nest, right? We can be honest. We can say stuff. Most real estate agents are bad at sales, right? Make some noise if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah? The reason you're bad at sales is why? Because you don't like being sold to. You see, everything in this world reproduces after its own kind. If you're not a great customer, how do you expect to find great customers? I don't like getting cold calls, so I don't want to cold call people. Nobody's going to answer. Yeah, yeah, they do. 10% of the people are going to answer. That's just facts, right? The people that don't answer, you work with the people who do. You're looking at the glass half empty. I'm looking at it half full. And guess what? It's an unlimited ga glass. You can never get to the bottom of it. I'm going to get into that in just a second. Transformation. Can I tell you guys a little bit about my story? Thanks, Mom. <laughs> I got a real estate in 2002. All right, I'm 20 years old. I dropped out of college. I went to four different colleges in two years, failed a history class, and said, college is not for me. I took the real estate class, and I was like, I don't even know if I want to do this. And my dad had a roofing business. I roofed houses with him growing up. I went back. I roofed houses. And I was like, for three days, I was on that roof, and I was like, I'm going to give real estate a try. <laughs> I go and take the test. I pass. I get my license, and I'm like, Dad, adios. I'm a real estate agent now. I go to work full time for 30 days. Guess how many deals I did? I did zero. I'm like, Dad, I'm back. I go back, I'm roofing, I'm doing real estate, I'm roofing. At the same time, it takes me eight long months to get to my very first deal. How many of you guys did a deal quicker than eight months? Everybody. <laughs> so then I started selling two a month, two a month, two a month. This is 2003, 2004. The market starts to explode. Explode. And guess what happens? I make a million dollars. And I'm 22, 23 years old. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is what it feels like to be a real estate mogul. Let me get some houses, some cars, some Cadillacs, some Hummers, some. Let me go out to the club. And then the market crashes. And I lose everything and some. Everything and some. And now... I'm like, Dad, 
how you doing over there? So I start out in life roofing. I get into real estate for 30 days, back to the roof, back to real estate. And then the market crashes again, back to the, it's just, just war, this tug of war, back and forth. And this is South Alabama too. Anybody know anything about South Alabama? What's the first thing y'all hear? What's the first word you think of when you hear the word Alabama? Huh? Hot? Everybody's saying hot. Really? It, 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 it's so crazy. The different places I go and ask that. I never heard hot. <laughs> it just goes to show you, like, people, like, different weathers and people that. Like, in New York, you know what they said? Mud. I ain't never even seen mud. <laughs> of course, I live on the beach. You guys know Alabama has beaches? Some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Florida goes right into Alabama. I don't know nothing about mud. I know a lot about beautiful sand and million dollar condos. Anyway, roofing, blah, blah, lose everything, back to the roof. Now I'm roofing. I'm like, what in the world just happened? I was just a multi-gazillionaire. Now I'm sleeping in my car that my friend gave me. I'm meeting out people refrigerators, sleeping on their couches, roofing. I got a job in the oil rig for a while. In 2008, I got laid off from the oil rig, and I was forced back into real estate. Now, what happened was, is I, the two bills I never let go, my cell phone and my MLS and my license, like I didn't let any MLS, my license, all that, kept that and my cell phone. That's the only thing I paid for. Of course, I was making good money on the oil rig and roof. I mean, I was doing good, but I was like, wow, what just happened? So I just started saving up cash and just no expenses. Let me live like this for a minute, see how I feel in a couple years. So in 2008, what I realized was that in 2007, my buddy that taught me everything about real estate in 2002, Right? Guess what he told me in, real, in 2002? He taught me phone calls, postcards, and emails. All right? This is before social media for all the Gen Z people. I love you guys. Phone calls, postcards, and emails. That was in 2002. In 2007, I'm watching MLS and I realized that same guy sold 30 properties. In 2007, that was our worst year down there. Everybody was leaving the business. I called him. I was like, bro, what are you doing, dude? He said, come over to the house. I'll teach you everything I'm doing, all my new stuff. Got a whole new setup. I go over there. We sit down. I'm like, all right, what you got? Guess what he said? Phone calls, postcards, and emails. I was like blown away. Wow. You mean nothing changed? Nope, nothing. So then I started to realize the philosophies of the business that never change. The philosophies of real estate, of the industry, that never change. And by the way, the more that things change, the more we must depend on the things that never change. A lot of changes in the industry right now, right? There always will be. And the more they change, the more we must depend on the things that never change. Now, what, what, is, what, what are the, some of the things that, that I learned during that time that will never change? Well, the first thing I realized was that closings happen every single day forever. No matter what's going on with the market, go back to the worst year, your worst years and look in your county records. Look in your MLS. You'll find closings happening every day. When you go back to 2008, how many of you, got, how many of you right now, raise of hands, wish that you were in the business in 2008? Hi, I want to see, I want to see like, the, and, and, and if you don't, if you wanted to be in the business in 2008, why? Do you realize that, that there was so much inventory and things were half the price? You don't want to be in that market? Why not? You'd rather be in this market with nothing for sale at the highest prices ever? Give me 2008 all day, every day. If you go back, you'll realize, and knowing what you know now, how it played out, you look at it, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. That was some of the scariest times in our economic history 
One of the most fearful times ever. But you're looking at it from now, from now, looking back, saying, that would have been awesome if I could have been in the business back then. And that was the scariest time ever. But closings were happening what? Every single day by the truckloads. More than you can ever handle. So that brings me to the next thing. I realized that there is no competition whatsoever. There's an unlimited amount of business for each and every one of you, each and every one of you, every day, more than you can ever get to. You'll never get to all the business. It's unlimited. This, this thought of, oh, the market's down. Oh, things are slow. Oh, interest rates. Oh, this, that, or the other. It's an illusion to your business. That's an illusion. And all it's doing is holding you back from doing what you need to do to actually take advantage of the unlimited abundance of business that's right in front of you. But again, maybe you haven't become the person. See, I'm telling you this, and it's, it's computing. You're like, oh, that makes sense. But then you're not the person that's going to go take advantage of it. If you were, if you knew that if you could make a thousand phone calls and pick up 10 listings, how many people would make those thousand phone calls within the next week? Hello, the reason that, you, that, that you're hesitating is because of the lack of expectations. I know that if you go make a thousand calls, I know that if you're coachable, if you understand how to communicate with people, not going after the deal, trying to serve them, understand what they're going through. The problem is mainstream coaching and training has taught us how to go after the appointment. And so we become so laser focused on this one KPI, thinking that that's the thing. No, it's not the thing. We don't know what that part, that, that's putting a KPI on what the result, what you're trying to make the result become. The KPI needs to be, did I connect with this person and learn what it is that they are trying to do and why? Let me tell you something. When you go to listing appointments, they don't care about your stuff. I'm going to put it on this thing, and I'm going to get 15 million views, and I'm going to, uh, we're going to do all this. Nobody, they don't care about that. When, when I did listing presentations, listing appointments, I never had a presentation. I never told them I'm going to put it on social and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I didn't, all I focused on was what they were trying to do and help them put together a game plan to do that. That's it. I focused on them. And guess what? I, I, was, uh, I went up against a couple agents interviewing situations where they're interviewing several agents a lot of times. Sometimes I lost a few, but I got most of them. Why? Because they knew that I, could, that I cared about them, not the deal, and that I didn't need them. Why? Because I understand business is unlimited. See, when you understand this, your communication completely changes. Because you know that if you don't get this deal, another one's right behind it. But let me take it a step further. Because when, when, when there's an apple tree, Okay. Let's say that apple tree is all the listings available to us in the market. I take one of these apples off the tree. It's, it's not available. Nobody else can take that apple anymore. Have I just taken the opportunity away from anyone else? Why? When I break that apple open, there's seeds that produce more apple trees, that produce more apples, that produce more apple trees. One apple produces so much so let me reference, let me bring it back to real estate. When an agent gets that listing, I start, I start thinking about all the opportunities that could happen from that listing, from, from me losing that listing. Let, let me name a few of them, right? There's, there's the cliche ones. I could call the owners and tell them, okay? I could find the buyer for that, okay? Those are, those are legit opportunities, I learned something. I'm becoming better, okay? But think about these two. When I lose the deal, what does that give me? It gives me my most valuable asset in the history of the world. Time. Is time the most valuable asset? Okay, when you lose a deal, guess what you get? All that time back you would have spent on that deal that you can now invest into five more deals. Oh, God. Did I say that too fast? You can turn a lost deal and multiply your business. 
You could also think, oh, this other agent got the listing. It's not on MLS yet. They may not even sign the listing agreement yet. Maybe they did. It's going to take three to four to five days to hit MLS. I have a window of opportunity to actually bring value to the other people in the subdivision and say, hey, I know of this house coming up. Can't tell you which one. It hasn't hit the market yet, but it's coming up. If you or anybody knows interested, let's be in position. I'm the guy. Come through me. I can go right to the agent. I know who the agent is. I know the house. I know everything about it. I know the owners. I know everything. I'm the guy. Now, even if they don't want to buy the house, how much value did you just bring them? But you only have a small window of opportunity to take advantage of this moment, and you're throwing it away because you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. True or false, there's two sides to everything. There's two sides to a penny, a pancake, everything, table, everything. Same thing with your perspective. When you're thinking about something in the wrong way, it makes you sad. But guess what? You're thinking that's the only way to think about it. I lost the deal. No, there's another way to think about it. The massive amounts of opportunity. Now, even once it hits the market, calling the owners, using that as an excuse to get to know them better or create more relationships. Oh, my God. Do you guys realize the future business? Every single property owner that you create a relationship with, whether they do a deal or not, turns into 20, 30, 40, 100 deals to you over the course of your career. Do you realize this? Can you fathom this? When I talk to agents, I'm like, how long are you going to do real estate? They're like, 20 years. I'm like, great. Here's the objective. We need to squeeze as many deals into this 20-year career as possible. Like, we're going to have a great 2024. But how, to, how do I build my career and build like 2,000 deals and have it stacked up to where in five years, I don't even have to lead Jen anymore. I've already built my business I've already expanded my influence. People in my market know who I am, what I do, I'm here to help and will never forget me. So in 2008, I got back in the business and I was just like, okay, (laughs) like it's half off and there's like, my buyers have the pick of anything they want. It was insane. Guess what I did? I was like, all right, I don't wanna be a foreclosure agent I'm going to represent, now that I realize it's relationships over transactions, let me represent all the buyers on these foreclosures because I know that in three years when the foreclosures go away and prices go up, they're going to let me list that, sell it, upgrade to another one and refer three people to me and I'm going to do five deals with this one person over the next three to five years. I had a three to five year plan to represent buyers on foreclosures today to become the number, my, my, my opportunity was to become the number one agent in my market. That, that's what I was, that was my goal. And I had a plan, and that's, what I was gonna, that's how I was going to do it. Mm. So, that was 2008. I make twice as much as I make on the oil rig the year before. I'm like, I'm in the game, son, which is only 80 grand. The next year, I do 100. It's 2009. The next year, we had the BP oil spill. Do y'all even know that that happened? And it was a mini recession because, like, literally, oil was washing up on our beaches. So sellers were dumping their properties. Agents were leaving the, the area. This is real. And I was like, yes. A moment where I can test out my theory here on how to handle any market. Because when the market took me out once... I was like, okay, but you're not going to get me again. I'm going to figure out what I did wrong, and you will never take me out again. And so when I realized it was about the principles of realizing that our job as an agent is to expand influence in the market, connect buyers and sellers. That's principle number one. Expand influence in our market and connect buyers and sellers. That will never change. I don't care what happens with NAR, brokerages, Zillow, AI, and by the way, Dayton brought up a bunch of question marks in the industry. Let, let me just rest, rest your little heads. None of that matters at all to your business. I promise you one thing. You'll never get paid less than the value you provide to the marketplace. And agents provide... If, we, if, if our commissions become diminished, it's because we're not providing enough value. And, they need, and it needs to come down. The market is always going to speak, right? The market will always speak. 
And the reason why that we're getting what we get, we've continued to get what we get. We're getting the same commission we got when I started in the business 22 years ago. The reason being is because we provide more value than the money that we get paid. I'll just wait until y'all clap. All right. I'll say it again since you didn't hear me. We provide more value than the money we get paid. More value. Yes. That's why we, are, that's why we get what we get and we'll continue to get what we get. It's not going to go down. See, it, this is going to be the funniest social experiment ever. If, if things go through, if things go through, which who knows what will happen, and it doesn't matter, but if things go through, it's going to be so funny sitting back when, when, when my clients are like, uh, oh, I don't need a buyer's agent. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, okay, go do a deal. Uh, holler, at me, holler at me when you get done. And I'm going I'm to walk away laughing because guess what? They're going to come running, not jogging, not walking, running, sprinting back to me and saying, what can I pay you? How much can I pay you to handle the next one? We haven't done a good job articulating what we do exactly. Why? Because everything's been figured in. That's okay. They will shortly figure it out. We ain't going nowhere, and it doesn't matter. Business will continue to be unlimited for each and every one of you. Our job will continue to be to do expand influence, connect buyers and sellers, right? The second principle is that closings will happen every day for the rest of your life, regardless of market conditions, regardless of anything that might happen in the industry. It doesn't matter. Closings are going to happen every single day, more than you can ever get to. Does that necessarily take like a weight off your shoulders to realize this, that you have job security? And the third principle is that competition doesn't exist. Business is unlimited. It doesn't matter what other brokerages do. If AI, this is is how you need to think. Here's the confidence you need to have. If AI took the whole industry of agents out, okay, you with me? And there's two agents left. I'm going to be one of them agents. (laughs) And I'm going to be outselling the other agents. That's the attitude you need to have. Who cares what all these people do? This is what I do for, I help people buy and sell through this complex process. When I, I've sold a thousand deals. If I came to Vancouver, Washington, guess what I'd have to do if I wanted to buy a house? Buy, call you. (laughs) I'd have to hire a real estate agent. I'd be lost, even though I've closed a thousand deals. Can you imagine the general public? The all that, they're like, everything's on Zillow. Guys, do you realize, do you realize that we're at an all-time high when it comes to the amount of information that consumers have? Do you, you realize that, right? But do you also realize that we're at an all-time high with the percentage of buyers and sellers who choose their own choice to use a real estate agent? Did you know that? All-time high information. Everybody's like, oh, we, are, we, know, we, we don't need agents. We know everything. Remember, knowing is different than doing. But we're at an all-time high with people who choose to use real estate agents. Who would have thunk? So in 2008, I come back. In 2010, the oil spill hits. And when I make it through the oil spill with making more money that year in a mini recession, I said, let me get on to some. Let me go to a bigger company and let me try to outdo some of these really top agents. So I go to Remax of Orange Beach, Alabama. Alabama. A lot of people are like, you, leave, you moved to California? I was started September 2010. All right? This is where I met my wife. And we, we went to high school together, didn't know it. She's a couple of grades behind me. She says, I robbed a cradle. So I show up, and after like a week or two, like I, I see her down the hallway, you know, and I'm like, woo, woo. <laughs> but I don't say anything. We're at work. We're in an office. I don't know her. I don't know her story. I don't know what's going on, right? Little did I know, and I was, think, I was thinking in my head, 
I wonder how long she's worked here. And little did I know, she was at the end of the hallway, and she was like, ooh, woo. I wonder how long he's been working here. And so after a couple months, we ended up talking, and we realized that we started at the exact same time. And then we realized we went to high school together. And we became really close friends, right? You can't date if, you, if you're in the same office. You can't date. That's against the rule. That's against the law. So we start being friends, dating. We start going out. We're drinking. And we're having the time of our life. We went to concerts. We went on trips. We went every night, every day with something crazy, laughing, joking, dancing. It was incredible for a couple years until it wasn't. And then the alcohol turned into fights. Every night we're fighting, 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 fighting. About what? I don't know. Nothing, probably. We're fighting, 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 fighting. It got really, really bad. And it got to the point where we just broke up. And when that happened, I was like, I'm kind of sad about this, but you know what? Let's hit the club. And so I went crazy for about a week. <laughs> it was exactly a week. It was Saturday to Saturday. I remember it vividly. And on that last day, that Saturday, I'm laying there, and I'd just been drugs, alcohol, drugs, alcohol, and I'm laying there, and I'm ODing. And I'm literally dying. And I'm looking up at the ceiling, and on everything, I'm looking up, and I'm, I see Jesus in the ceiling. And I'm like, Lord, if I wake up tomorrow, I will never, ever touch anything ever again. And this was a struggle for me for years. I tried to quit so many years. And alcohol wasn't even the problem, by the way. And I couldn't. I would quit for an hour. I'm done forever. Quit for an hour until this night happened. And I'm, I'm laying there, and I, God, if I wake up, I will never touch anything ever again. So I don't know how. I think I'm like superhuman. Like my body at that point was like superhuman. I wake up, and I look around, and I'm like, oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. I threw everything away. And I call my, my ex-girlfriend at the time, and I'm like, hey, I almost died last night. I'm never drinking. I'm never doing anything ever again. You want, you want, let's meet up. Let's talk. Let's get back together. If you don't want to, I understand. But if you want to, I'm up for it. So we, got, we, we talked. We met up. We talked. We got back together. It was a recovery, Right? And that night, that Saturday night, since that night, I haven't touched a single drop, a single drink, a single nothing. And March 30th, March 30th was 10 years. So where I'm going with this is coming back to transformation. If you guys want to go to the next level, you've got to experience a level of transformation, become a completely different person. The person that says, oh, I know what to do, I'm just not doing it, you, you've got to change now. But my point is, is that the, the moment of transformation, now I want you to hear this, the moment of transformation is instantaneously. The moment that I, when it clicked in my brain that I was done was instant. It didn't take a long time when it, it was immediate and I was done. Okay? Transformation happens instantaneously. It's not a process. The process is 
the amount of time, time it takes for you to make the decision to transform. All those years I tried to quit, that, that, that doesn't count. That, that was, I wasn't ready to make the decision. Why? Because I wasn't fed up with my circumstances in life. When it comes to your business, a lot of you are walking around with a lot less business than you want, a lot less business than you know you're capable of. But guess what? I was walking around wanting to quit drugs and alcohol. But we had something in common. What was it? We weren't, set, we weren't, set, we weren't frustrated with the circumstances in our life enough to make a change. And until that clicks for you, you're going to stay right where you are. This makes sense, right? Let me make some noise real quick. Let me hear you. Okay. So the year that that happened, in 2014, that was the first year I did 100 deals. Coincidentally, the year I quit everything, I started like crushing it, right? I sold 100 deals that year, and I sold 100 deals for eight years in a row after that as a single agent. I didn't have a team. I didn't have a buyer's agent. I have listing agents. I have marketing. I had one admin doing just the transactions coordination and MLS stuff. I did all the listing appointments, showings, closings, inspections, all that stuff. A lot of people hear that, and they're like, oh, my God, you didn't have a life, did you? You know how many hours I was working? 20, 20, 25 hours a week, selling 100 properties a year. A lot of people don't believe that. It's a fact. How? How did I close two deals a week as a single agent working so little? 20% of my business is buyers, right? And you're right, that has a lot to do with it, the efficiency of understanding listings or leverage. I'm still gonna get buyers. It's not like I'm saying no buyers. I took every, I never referred out a single buyer. I just didn't get that many. It's, it's, it's fun to work buyers when you don't get that many. You're like, oh man, I ain't got one of you in a while. <laughs> Let me find you something to show you some houses. It's a whole different ball game. The way that I did it was two words personal brand. And guess what? I wasn't even on social media yet. I didn't start doing social media until 2017, and I never used it for my real estate business, just for my coaching business. Now, what's a brand? The best definition I ever heard. A brand is a name that reminds you of a story that you want to be in. That's good. A brand is a name that reminds you of a story that you want to be in. How many of you guys are following me already? Okay. Um, let me ask you this. If you guys had, had an opportunity to be in on a great investment deal or business opportunity with me, would you take that deal? She says, hell yeah. <laughs> Why? Why not? You've never met me face to face. Because my name reminds you of a story that you want to be in. What's that story? What story did I tell, do I tell you guys every day? Hard Determination. Hard work. Dependability. Consistency. Making it from the bottom. It's all about building a story that people want to be in. That's a brand. And your name reminds them of that. Guys, it's not hard to build a brand. Right? It's not hard to get listings. But guess what you got to do? Do it. <laughs> now, I only have a, a, a few more minutes. I wanted to tell you guys something before I go. Right now is the greatest opportunity. Right now is the greatest opportunity ever in your career moving forward. Why do I say that? Because there's going to be a year in the next decade. There will be a year where we hit 7 million existing home sales. 
Now, a lot of people think that's an audacious prediction. Here's the thing. You know, 2021 was the year of the boom, 6 million transactions. That's the record. No, it's not. Did you know that in 2005 we did 7 million transactions, existing home sales? Did you know that? Now you do know that. And now when you realize that, you start to think, oh my God, the demographic now of people that want to own homes is ridiculous. The first time home buyers, way stronger than in the 2000s. The trade up sellers, people who, hate, <laughs> people who are sitting in their homes that hate their homes right now, that are dying to move, they just can't, is ridiculous. The demographic of people and the amount of deals that are gonna happen when everything, when all the perfect storm between inventory, interest rates, prices, demand, when everything hits, it's gonna be glorious. And there's gonna be a year in the next 10 years that we hit that seven million again. And you're gonna to wish to God that you're still in the game and that you've been doing everything you could do up to that point, expanding your influence in the market. The time is right now. Now, when a market is down, and I learned this in 2008, I learned this in 2010, and I've learned this here more recently, I learned it in the pandemic. When a market is down, when agents are pulling back because they think that the market has anything to do with their business, there's so much market share on the table for you to expand your influence, which means what? Getting people to know who you are, what you do, that you're here to help, and that they never forget you. The thing says zero. You want me to keep going? Make some noise with me. Keep going. Okay. I'll give you guys one more. I think that We've been programmed, we've been programmed as agents to think certain things, like the only way to get a listing is to call a seller and say, hey, would you consider selling? Or I got a buyer. That's not the only way to get listings. But we've been programmed to think that way. What if you called a seller and said, hey, I see you've got a three bedroom. Do you need a four? I got a really nice one I'd love to show you. Oh. Now we're, now we're providing value, and they're like, this is different. We've been programmed to think we got to buy leads. There's no other way to get leads but to buy leads. We've been programmed to think that. That's not true. Leads are everywhere. Leads are humans in the market, period. We've been programmed to think these things. Guys, please open yourself up to a few things. One, transformation. And realizing it's not the what to do's, it's the me doing the what to do's and the strategies and the principles. When you realize the principles, you know nothing can take you out. NAR, the market, Zillow, AI, other agents, nobody. Now, do you guys feel like something that would help boost your business is if you could really scale just getting tons of listing appointments? Do you think that I could teach you more than you ever thought you knew about listings? Make some noise if you do. I don't believe you. Y'all are like, oh, he's here, so I'm just going to do this. <laughs> if you want to get more listing appointments, I'm going to teach you everything more than you ever thought you knew about listings. All you have to do is go to setmorelistingappointments.com. I created something really special for you guys. I hope you guys can feel the energy and the love I have for you and your business. I wish you guys nothing but success. And that's past my time. Thank you guys.